Hi there, and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and Alana Terry is not with us today. She is with us in spirit, absolutely, um, but she is not here on the podcast today. I'm going to do a solo episode, and what we're going to be talking about today, we really want this to be evergreen. We want it to be applicable no matter when you're listening, but I'm actually recording this the day that this is going live, Monday, June 1st, 2020. And, um, but we want this to be a generally useful episode for people, but at the same time, there's so much we need to pray for immediately today, like yesterday, you know, like last week, um, that is so important. So we are going to both pray generally and specifically. Our general topic and our general prayer is racial healing. And um, in the, if, if you don't know, if you haven't been watching the news in America for about a week now, almost a week, we have um, basically uh, been in a very difficult situation where peaceful protests that were denouncing racism and police brutality have turned violent. So we have found ourselves in a place where it's just the violence is escalating and there is no denying that we need prayer absolutely right now. I personally have friends and family members um, that are in the law enforcement community that are afraid to go to work because of just fearing for their safety. Um, our economy is already injured and you know, due to COVID-19, the, the economy is in shambles and small businesses in particular are really suffering. All businesses are suffering. And now they're suffering again as they stand by. Many of them are watching looting and destruction of property. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. And we definitely want it to stop. But we can't stop there in our prayers. Um, our immediate prayers are, yes, the United States right now is literally on fire. I mean, it's burning. Um, but that isn't the problem. That's a symptom of the problem. And I think it's so important, so very important that we understand that. Um, and I'm afraid that there's this temptation to pray only for that symptom, to pray, oh, dear God, resolve this, give us peace in the streets just for the sake of our own peace of mind and, and to try and pray for the violence to end, for cleanup to begin so that now we can move forward with whatever normal we had before then. I mean, it wasn't so normal. We had a global pandemic and, and all kinds of other troubles before that. But, um, but we can't do that as Christians. I am fully convinced that we cannot pray just for the symptom of what's going on here. And if you're listening a month from now, if you're listening a year from now, 10 years from now, there's going to be something that involves racial tension that's, that's going on, that's getting attention, and there might be symptoms of the racial tension that are coming out. We might want to see them go away, and we might be tempted only to pray. Absolutely, we want the violence to stop. Absolutely, we want the looting to stop and the vandalism to stop. Um, there's nothing good about any of those things, and that behavior cannot be condoned. But we can't just pray, God, bring an end to this. We have got to look deeper. We have to look at the root. I just, I feel like whenever you see anger growing, wherever you see anger growing, springing up here and there, we have to dig deeper. And we, we have to dig deeper so that we can uncover the story or the stories behind that anger. Because as Christians, we look to Christ as the example. And when he saw people um, doing whatever, all sorts of things, he didn't see what they were doing. He looked beyond that. Um, and I don't mean to compare protests to sin. Protests are not sinful. Um, Violence, vandalism, looting, that's breaking the law. It's hurting others. It's, um, it's sinful, I believe. Um, but, but I'm saying no matter what behaviors Jesus saw in people, he saw to their heart. And what I see, and I think we really have to keep digging to uncover, is that there are stories behind this unrest that can't be ignored. 
we as Christians cannot ignore the stories. You might be living those stories. And I'm going to tell you that this week, my heart was broken, absolutely broken. I didn't even watch the video. And just knowing what happened to George Floyd broke my heart. Um, a month ago or whenever the video for Ahmad Arbery came out, I was heartbroken for that poor man and what happened to him and the injustice of that. And to the point of grieving and crying. And I think that grief that I felt was some of it was grief for not feeling it as deeply before because this is not new. This is not something that's just come up recently for whatever reason for me. And I think for others, maybe it's the proximity of two very tragic deaths that have brought this to the surface, um, making it more visible, making it more emotional, emotionally evoking, um, emotion and evoking. Um, but whatever the case, this is not new. And I was grieved that I didn't see it before. And this, this week, just this week, I'm 43 years old, guys. And just this week, I engaged in some dialogue with some friends that I've known for a very long time. Some of them I haven't seen in a long time, but I've, I've been in touch with them on the surface, seen Facebook posts of their families. And I, for the first time, have heard stories of how they have encountered racism in their everyday lives in ways that I had no idea, absolutely no idea. And I just really believe that when we pray for what's going on in America today, that we need to pray absolutely for peace, absolutely for God to stop the violence, but we can't stop there. We can't just pray for the symptom. We need to pray for justice. We need to pray for healing, for racial healing, um, and so many other things. Um, I think of Pentecost. So we celebrated Pentecost yesterday, which is when the Holy Spirit descended with tongues of fire. And I see Pentecost as kind of the polar opposite of what happened at the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, humanity had gotten proud. They had built this... Um, creation that, that they wanted to reach up to heaven. They wanted to be like God and God humbled them by scattering them and scattering them into different languages so that they couldn't cooperate and come together. And yet on Pentecost, we see the Holy Spirit coming and these people from every tongue and tribe and nation could understand one another. The Holy Spirit brought enlightenment and unity in a way that undid what happened back at the Tower of Babel. When we think of Pentecost and we think of that spirit of fire that we want to rain down on us today, that revival that we want to see, I think one of the big topics of revival that we have to keep in mind is unity and racial reconciliation, racial healing for every single one of us. And it begins by looking inside of ourselves and it begins by asking the Holy Spirit, open our eyes, open our ears, let us hear the voices of people that we haven't bothered hearing. Let us speak their language. Let us hear the cries that before we just kind of discounted because it wasn't something that we related to or understood. That is the spirit of Pentecost that I want to see today. And we don't, praise God, we don't have to wait for next year for Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, if you're here with me, you are most likely a Christian. That same Holy Spirit, he is in you. He is in me and he is in each and every one of God's believers, we can begin that process of hearing one another and of having open ears to hear the language of the people that are hurting in our lives. And it doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, or anywhere in the mix. All of us need to open our ears. We need to understand what are the things that make people angry and why. And instead of replying to that anger with our own anger because it happens. And I will tell you, and I'll be really honest with you, I get angry sometimes when I hear things that are directed toward white people in general. I, I get the, the hairs on the back of my neck will bristle and I'll think, that's not me. But we need to stop there and we need to say, wait a second, what's this person really saying? God, open my ears to hear their language. Spirit of Pentecost, help us 
to dialogue, even though we come from very different places, so that we can get to the root of what this problem is. And I would just implore you, wherever you are today, you might be uh, in, in deep pain and anger because you are the victim of racism on a daily basis. You might be like me. Maybe you just have, you had no idea or you have no idea of the day-to-day -day struggles that some people today in 2020 in the United States today are going through. Open your ears to hear those stories. Have grace with those that don't understand your story. Please, we need this. We need this so badly and we need it to start in us. I need it to start with me. We can't point fingers. We can't say there are those people over there that, that need this word, that, oh yeah, those people that perpetuate racism need to be changed. No, we need to look inside of us. And I think of Jesus. He came not to bring peace, but a sword. And when I think of when he came not to bring peace with a sword, the verse that comes to mind is the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And it is impossible to allow the Holy Spirit, to allow Jesus, to allow the living word of God to penetrate us Dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, judging the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. It's impossible to do that with our fists clenched so tightly on what we believe, on who we want to be, who, how we want to be perceived, the things that we, we hold dear. We need to be teachable. And that doesn't mean that your values go out the window. That doesn't mean you need to be ashamed of being white or ashamed of being any nationality or any part of any ethnic group. Um, but what it means is we need to all, every single one of us be teachable and allow the spirit of God to penetrate through his word, speaking truth to us to judge the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts. So with that in mind, um, I just want to come with some prayers that we can pray. And I posted this as a blog post on prayingchristianwomen.com slash blog. And you can look and find this um, list of prayers. But I want to pray through it and actually do the praying right now. I couldn't do that in the post, but I want us to just come together and pray. I'm going to read through the topics real quick just so you can see what they are um, and then actually pray through them. First, we need to repent. We need to begin by asking God to search our hearts and to draw out any racism in any form that might be polluting our hearts and our minds. We need to pray for blind eyes to be opened on all sides, for God to open our eyes to pain and injustice in the world, wherever it is, for people who are blinded by pain or anger, any of us, whenever it shows up in our lives, to see clearly that we're not seeing red, that we're seeing clearly, even when that anger wells up, even when we get bristled because of something or a term or a, um, an accusation even that's, that's thrown at us, that we would be clear, that we would see truth and we would be unblinded and unburdened by raw emotion. For meaningful dialogue to, to occur that would result in racial healing as well as systemic changes that would result in racial equality. That's huge. I can't even begin to touch that. I don't even think I know exactly what that means or what that looks like, but God, let it be so. We need, we need that to happen. And it starts with dialogue and it ends with action or it continues with action. Um, so that this would be happening, this dialogue and these actions would be taking place on the personal level between everyday people like you and me that it would happen in churches across the world, that it would happen at the local, state, national, and worldwide levels. We can pray that a spirit of peace would wash over these protests and that the violence would end. Absolutely, we want the violence to end. We want the looting to end. We want the graffiti, the vandalism, the physical harm, and, and just the, in general, the the chaos to end. We want the curfews not to have to be in place. We want businesses to start to rebuild. So we need to pray that God would uproot any spirit of anger, bitterness, or rage, 
and replace it with peace and love that if the enemy has a foothold in any of these protests that that he would be totally stopped in his tracks that people would be able to protest with peace that their voices would be clearly heard and heeded and and i have seen just amazing displays of love and brotherhood between some of the protesters and police um, among people of all colors and backgrounds. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that. Absolutely. We want to pray against any kind of violence that's happening right now um, for the police force, that corrupt officers would be quickly identified and removed. And the other side of that coin is for God's protection for the upstanding officers that are there doing their job, trying to protect the community, whose jobs are so hard right now, who's, who are fil filled with fear, whose spouses and families are filled with fear for them. And that's not, not just police officers. It's first responders of all kinds. It's people working, 911 dispatchers. I mean, they're just this, there's this whole world of law enforcement um, and first responders that are on the front lines right now. Those that are in it for the good, God protect them. I also think we need to pray that in all of those areas that, that God would raise up Christian um, leaders in the police force who will not only stand up for what is right, but that will spread the gospel in an unprecedented way. For business owners affected by looting, that God would provide for them, that God um, would provide for every single one of their needs. They are already hurting, like we talked about, because of, of COVID-19, um, that God would help the churches around them, the communities and people around them. I've already seen it happening on social media, people rallying together um, to, help a re to help rebuild um, for protection from any more looting and destruction. And um, most of all, for those who feel voiceless to have their voices heard, it's what this is all about and just for God to open eyes, open ears for people that feel like they have no voice to be heard, that we would be the voice for those that don't feel like they're being heard, that we would be part of the voice for justice and equality. This is not an exhaustive list. I would love to hear your additional prayers. Um, I know that this, this is a scary topic to talk about for me. I do not like conflict, and it is so easy for words in a, an emotionally charged topic like racism to be misinterpreted for phrases to be used in the wrong way, for me to use the wrong language as a white person. I don't have all of the right language or terminology. So my prayer and my hope, I literally prayed over this episode that God would protect the listeners, you that are listening, that are hearing this from any offense, that there would be nothing that I say that would be a stumbling block and that you would be pointed to Jesus, that God's will would be done. His kingdom would come through these prayers that we're going to pray today. So let's pray together. Father, we begin our prayer today with a prayer of repentance, collective repentance, Lord, just for our nation, for those that aren't part of the United States, you can pray for your nation too. God, we repent that our nation has allowed racism to permeate places that, that are, it's so subtle that it's not even detected in certain places, but there's just this racism that, that is perpetuated and allowed to remain. Father, individually, we repent because it starts in each of us, God. Individually, we repent and we pray, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Draw out racism in any shape or form that might be polluting our hearts and our minds. Help us to see it for the ugliness that it is. Open our eyes to those blind spots. We all have them, Lord. Open our eyes to our blind spots. No matter who we are, where we're coming from, 
as we look at people that look different from us, that think different from us, that act different from us, that we would be aware of our blind spots, the ways that we are prejudiced, the ways that we are biased, the ways that we have allowed racism to creep in. Forgive us, God. Let us turn from that. I pray that it would be vile and disgusting to us as we see it, that we would want no part of it and we would run in the opposite direction. God, that we would have the eyes of Jesus, that we would have the fruit of the Spirit and just be able to walk as children of of the Most High God, that we would see that there are many members of the body and there's no way we would cut off a member of our own body. Why would we cut off members of the body of Christ? Help us to love one another the way that you love us, God, not the way that that even we love ourselves, but the way that you love us. God, we pray for blind eyes to be open. Help us to see the pain and the injustice in the world. Grieve our hearts for the things that grieve you. Help those who are blinded right now by pain or anger to see clearly, to see truth, to have open ears like like on Pentecost to hear the stories and the voices of the person across the aisle from them who might look different, who might think different, who might vote different. Help us to hear one another for the glory of your kingdom, God. We pray for the spirit of peace to wash over the protests, that the violence would come to an abrupt end. In Jesus' name, God, we pray this that you would uproot any spirit of anger, bitterness, or rage and replace it with peace and brotherly love, kindness, harmony. God, we pray that meaningful dialogue would occur that would result in racial healing as well as systemic changes that will result in racial equality. Father, like I said, I don't even know what that looks like. I I hardly know where to begin other than to ask my friends what their story might be, to share my own story, to open dialogue in a way that welcomes difference, to be teachable, to realize that I don't have all the answers, that I still have so much to learn. We pray for the police force, Lord. We lift up the entire police force that corrupt officers would be quickly identified and removed, God, like the cancer that they are. We pray for protection for each and every officer that's out there trying to make a difference, for each and every first responder, 911 dispatcher. um, God, protect them. to surround them with community support and love, raise up prayer warriors just when they need it most. And God, that you would raise up Christian leaders in the police force, in our first responders, that will not only stand up for what is right and expose what is wrong, but spread the gospel in an unprecedented way. God, let there be a revival in the police force. God, let there be just a a blossoming of your kingdom in the police force, that they would be that city on a hill, that your kingdom would grow, that they would show the love of Jesus to the communities that they serve, that that would be seen and recognized and that that would be contagious. Thank you, God. Let it be so. Father, we pray for business owners affected by the looting for those that were affected by the violence during some of the protests that turned violent. God, that you would provide for them in every way, physically, financially, that you would raise up communities and churches to rally around them and help them rebuild, that they would end up better than they were before. Father, that you would be at work. Protect them from any more looting and destruction protect the people that are protesting from any more violence, injury, or loss of life. 
God, most of all, we just pray that for those that are voiceless, that their voices would be heard, that they would feel heard. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke, Isaiah 58, 6. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, ensure justice for those being crushed, Proverbs 31, 8. Father, give us a voice. As believers, let us have a collective voice that loves justice, that loves mercy, that we would walk humbly with you, following your lead in every way. Amen. This is, like I said, this is not an exhaustive list. There's so much more to pray for. And I would love to hear your prayers, what's on your heart. And I just, my, my prayer is that as we pray for these issues, and I don't even have to pray this. I know it will happen because this is how God works. As we pray over these issues that will be launched into action, I'm not going to say prayer isn't enough. Prayer is everything. It's the backbone of everything we do. It's our relationship and our walk with God. But out of that prayer, out of that faith and love, there's going to be action. Look for where God is directing you to take action, whether it's a conversation with someone of a different race or nationality, whether it's uh, getting involved in, in a peaceful um, solution to, to trying to find an end to racism in your country, in, in our case, in America, um, and, and just to promote healing educate yourself on, on uh, the issues that are important to people who are feeling marginalized. If you, don't have, if, you, if you don't feel like there's a problem, then look into it. Listen to the stories. Research the issues. Read the books. There's so many resources out there. Um, and healing starts, racial healing starts inside each one of us. As Christians, I, just, I believe that we need to be on the front lines of seeking justice and meaningful change. And I know that God is going to work through this, what looks like just a hopeless, awful situation. When you look at the news today, um, he's going to use it for good. He's going to use it for his kingdom purposes. He's going to bring about his perfect will. He's going to bring about good things through this. Let's be part of that. Let's be open to how he is going to use each one of us to be that light to be that bridge, to be that change. God, hear our prayers. Amen.